And I think it's important to know why you're buying the knife you're buying. Um, what is the use gonna be? What are, you, what are your plans with it? Do you need it to do a lot of different jobs? Do you have one particular job that you do often that you need a knife just for that? I often get asked about the types of knives and the styles of knives that are out there, and especially of the different styles of, we, of knives that we make. Uh, what's best and what style should they buy and what do I suggest? There's a lot of different styles of knives out there and quite frankly, a lot of stuff I think is just has to do with marketing and, and hype and kind of BS. So I'm gonna go through a few of the styles of knives here, kind of talk about some knives that I see fairly often on the market. Um, a lot of the knives that we build at Montana Knife Company actually are built for a lot of uses. Uh, I, I anticipate the customers that are buying our knives that are gonna find themselves in a hunting situation but then the next day they might find themselves out on the ranch feeding cows or at work cutting open boxes, uh, stuff like that, more utilitarian type stuff. So we'll go into covering those different styles of knives here. When I talk about the types of knives that are out there, you know, there's a lot of other things to consider in a knife. Handle material, is it a folder, is it a fixed blade, uh, things like that. So I'm not really gonna cover that today. This is really more of a video about blade shape and the uses within those blade shapes. Handles though is a critical part. The handle of the knife, how you're holding it, what you're doing. Is it something that you wanna have be a little bit more square flat sides where you can really index it in the hand? Or do you want something that's more round that won't create a bunch of wear points if you're say carving with that knife all day long, working all day long, maybe cutting you know vines in a vineyard. Uh, we have a friend of ours, Kip, that cuts hops in his hops farm for his brewery. He's cut hops all day long. You don't want a handle that's really, uh, you know, got sharp, aggressive edges on it. So we're not gonna get into too much of the handle stuff. I will say all of these blade designs that I talk about can come in a fixed blade or a folder. Uh, and again, I think when you buy a fixed blade or a folder, you really, that's a whole nother video where you need to consider how hard of use, how are you gonna carry it, what are you gonna be using it for? First up, we have the Drop Point Hunter. To me, it's the absolute most useful knife. Cuts across, no pun intended, all different uses, all different uh, activities that you can do. I think being called a drop point hunter paints it a little bit more in the hunting category than it maybe needs to be. The drop point hunter is just a general term for a knife that as the, as the spine comes out, that edge starts, or that, that spine starts to drop into the edge. And again, with a drop point hunter, you can have different profiles coming away from the tip of that knife. You tend to see a knife with a little bit more belly in a drop point. Uh, that being said, you can have that drop tip style and then that tip goes away really quick, that belly of that knife um, to, pr to produce a really pointy knife. So uh, drop point hunter, all time favorite knife, probably the most popular knife in the world. In regards to drawbacks on a, on a drop point hunter, I just don't see any, quite frankly. Unless you're really needing a knife for a super specific thing where you need a point that's upswept. Uh, but really with a drop point hunter, it creates a strong tip. You actually have a tip there that's useful. Um, there's just really nothing that jumps out at me as this knife can't do this job. Might not be perfect for every job, but it can do every job. Next up, we have the trailing point knife. The trailing point knife is where the spine comes out and actually goes up to the tip, and the tip is above the spine of the knife. These knives you would generally consider like a fillet knife, a skinny knife, a knife where you actually want just a lot of edge. You're making long swipes. Uh, we have a knife that's similar to this, but I wouldn't really call it a trailing point in our bear tooth, but it is a knife with a lot of edge. Uh, we do have a fillet knife coming out, and that's exactly what this is for. A knife that you just want that tip up and out of the way, lots of edge to cut with. Uh, the drawback of a trailing point knife, again, leads to that tip. Um, it does have a really pointy tip usually on those. They're not really strong. And if you're, if you're needing a knife where you're using the tip to do a lot of things, that tip is leading away from where you're normally pointing that knife and working. So it's not the handiest knife uh, for, for, a, for a job that it requires a lot of tip work on that knife. Next, we have the Hawkbill knife. 
The hawkbill knife is just generally a knife, you know, uh, an another name for a hawkbill is like a talon. Um, I'm just not a big fan of these of these blades. Uh, I, I don't personally have a lot of use for them, uh, but th there are a few things that that knife is good for. A hawkbill or a talon has an edge that really dives off aggressive and the tip ends up below, even below the, the cutting edge of the knife. You have a real downward point on that knife. Uh, what I will say is if I was opening boxes all day long and I just wanted a tip and a pulling action, a ripping action, uh, a knife would be good for that. And I know there's a lot of people that work in warehouses and places like that where they're open a lot of boxes. Um, that's great. That's what that knife is for. I think this knife's a little different than a worn cliff um, or a sheep's foot knife. Um, so I'd, I wouldn't necessarily use this knife as a skinny knife. I think that's, that's more for those uh, worn cliff and sheep's foot knives. Um, what I will say the drawback to this knife is, is the fact that it really only is good for that pulling action. Uh, it's not a knife that you're gonna go do a lot of utilitarian type stuff with. It's just a very specified job oriented knife. Next up we have the gut hook. A gut hook really isn't actually a style of blade, but it is something that we're asked about a lot. So I thought we would cover it in here. A gut hook is generally kind of a slot that's milled or ground into the spine of a knife that's got a sharpened edge on it. And the idea of that is to get that under the hide of a, of a deer or some, whatever game that you're, that you're harvesting that you're trying to dress out, and you get that under that hide and you can rip all the way up the, the length of that animal without actually poking into the cavity of the elk or the deer, getting into the, to the guts and, and the stomach area. Here, here's what I would say about that is, is you know, that's a, useful, that's a useful thing to use that knife for. However, when you're done with that, that no longer no, has no use on that knife. Um, that's my problem with a gut hook is that generally the rest of the time you use that knife, a gut hook is in the way. Um, what I would suggest if you want a gut hook is to actually carry just a gut hook itself that is basically on a, on a, on a piece of steel. It's a little rod or maybe has a little handle on it. You tear that elk or that deer open and then you put that away. Uh, I, I don't want that hook on my knife. It can be dangerous. It can snag on your, on your clothing. The spine of that knife, I generally think should be safe. Um, I don't want that snagging inside the cavity of the animal as I'm working on, you know, dressing out the rest of that animal. Personally, I think with a gut hook, you can replace that just by learning how to use good practices and good techniques and actually using the knife. Uh, you can get under the skin of the cavity of that elk and use your fingers in a V form and ride that, ride that uh, tip of that blade right up the cavity where your fingers are riding underneath the hide. The edge is right here. You're keeping that tip from going way down in and poking into the guts. So um, again, that to me is the drawback of that gut hook is that it's, it's really in the way 99% of the time. The sheep's foot and the Warncliffe design, I kind of put these two together. They're somewhat similar. Uh, a Warncliffe design really starts at the, at the handle and it, the, the spine just slowly and continuously dives off to the, to the point of the knife meeting the cutting edge. The cutting edge is generally a straight line. A sheep's foot is a little different where that spine comes out for a little while and then dives off a little sharper meeting the edge again with kind of a straight edge. Um, but they're a somewhat similar in design. The sheep's foot was actually an originally designed for trimming sheep's feet, uh, for going around trimming the hooves and not having a point that if the animal kicked or moved, that the point of that wasn't gonna accidentally kind of stab into an animal. You generally don't need the point of that knife to do a lot. However, it is there if you wanna open boxes and whatnot. It's also generally a pretty, uh, um, you know, in a Warncliffe design, that tip, there's a lot of tip there, but it's also pretty weak. Uh, this is though, a sheep's foot or a Warncliffe design is a lot of times what you'll see in like a skinny knife for an electrician or a lineman. Occasionally with those knives, you'll see more of, of, more of that hawkbill style, maybe where that tip drops a little and you actually have kind of a concave area to hang up that wire in and really strip off the wire. Um, I really like to see that sheep's foot design in a lineman knife because you rarely need the tip and in a sheep's foot, the tip is actually pretty strong. If you're, you know, uh, spinning a preform on the wire, a lineman will know what a preform is. You can get that tip underneath that preform and you can wrench on it and kind of use it as a prying technique. So 
Uh, that's the Warncliffe. Generally, I think Warncliffe's actually just super cool in style if you do them right. I built a lot of them in my custom knife making. Uh, Damascus Warncliffe and Mother Pearl Handle, they look really good. The Tanto knife, uh, one of the more popular knives out there from a look standpoint, very angular in design. They look pretty cool. Um, generally, the spine of these knives is pretty much straight. The edge is pretty much straight until that final third. It makes a hard angle out towards the tip of that knife. Uh, great knife for piercing and stabbing. Got a very aggressive, strong point, especially if it's ground correctly. Um, very difficult to sharpen. Uh, you have to keep that edge very straight. And when you're using that knife and you're doing a lot of work with the cutting edge, where it makes that angle, that, that little point on that angle uh, tends to take a lot of use and, and abuse, and that gets dull first. And you tend to see people sharpen that area a lot, and pretty soon that sharp angle goes to a little rounded curve, and it no longer has that really cool angular sharp design. These really came from like katanas and the Japanese swords. This is a Japanese style blade. Um, again, for piercing, stabbing, um, Kind of a cool looking knife, but generally, I don't find a lot of really useful purpose uh, other than like a self-defense carry, you think you're gonna stab somebody knife. It's not really a knife that you see a farmer or a rancher or, or a lineman out carrying using in the field. All right, the, uh, the cousin to the Tanto, we have the reverse Tanto. You generally see a lot of these in folding knives these days. The reverse Tanto, has that, comes out straight on that spine and makes a real angular uh, dive down to the point uh, in reverse to the Tanto who has that, has that angular happen, uh, transition happening in the edge. This is now happening more in the spine. Um, this knife is, has a really nice strong point on it. It can be very useful. You can use it for opening boxes. A lot of multiple different tasks. They're generally strong, uh, pretty strong point on them, strong blade. Uh, keep some dimension in that blade on the way out. Um, the reverse Tanto, again, I think this comes down to a matter of aesthetics and what you like and what you dislike. I think it's kind of a love or hate thing. You, I think you get a lot of opinion on both sides. And I don't think there's really any right or wrong answers to that. Um, very useful blade. Uh, if done correctly, very cool looking blade, stylish, uh, and something you'll probably see us do someday. All right, the clip point knife. Uh, one of my favorites from a from a just a design standpoint uh, looks really cool if you do it right. A lot of a lot of people would refer to a, a clip point in like the Bowie knife. Uh, that clip point has a blade that comes out. The spine is pretty straight, and it looks like the last third or so of the blade just gets kind of clipped off. Kind of a straight, angular, can be kind of concaved going down to the tip. Uh, the Bowie knife was originally a fighting knife. Jim, Jim Bowie, James Bowie was a, was, you know, a soldier that was fighting with his knife. And uh, it's a great knife for stabbing, for piercing. It's also a great knife for chopping. It's got a lot of width and dimension back in the blade. Uh, drawback to that is generally the tip on those do tend to be finer, so it's not great for prying and doing that kind of work with the tip. Uh, you do also see a lot of clip points in like a small pocket knife, like an old timer. Um, <clears throat> again, that's a knife where a guy like my dad forever with an old timer knife or a, or, a, or a case knife was using the tip of that pocket knife to clean out like grease zerks and get dirt and junk out of a grease zerk hole. Um, again, has a great tip to it. It's useful, uh, but a lot of my dads and a lot of grandpas out there, their tips of their knives, their old, their old timers and those pocket knives are missing the last quarter inch for, because they're prying with them. Uh, so again, very useful knife, very good design, uh, but it's kind of job task oriented. I wouldn't do a lot of prying with that blade. Um, absolutely love the clip point knife though. It's a kind of a traditional American knife. Um, and I say American really probably came from more of that Sheffield, England. You see a lot of Sheffield, England knives uh, that were made with that clip point. Um, and then a lot of that went into the down, down south with James, uh, James Bowie and uh, Mr. Black and those kind of people. So cool, cool, cool knife. All right, next up we have a Kukri. Uh, this is the knife that you see uh, Jason Knight, custom knife maker, make a lot of the times. He's kind of become really popular with his Kukris. Uh, these knives are fantastic for chopping. 
Um, knife kind of comes out, uh, got a nice recurve uh, in, in the edge, drop, drops down a nice belly in that knife and then sweeps back up to the tip. The great thing with that knife is, is when you chop, they've got that recurve in that edge. So as something comes up in there, if you're chopping or if you're pulling through something, the edge is pulling into what you're actually cutting. In reverse to that, you've got like a trailing point knife where the edge is just a constant upsweep to the tip. So whatever you strike with that wants to slide off that edge, where a kukri wants to trap whatever's in there and pull and slash through it. Um, kukri actually has a really usable tip on them. Uh, kukris have a really cool uh, look and design. Um, you can get really artistic with those, especially the custom knife makers. Um, but you know, a drawback to a kukri is it's a big knife. You're not gonna see a small kukri. Kukris are designed to do one thing and that's chop stuff. Um, they're very strong, uh, depending on how you make them. You can make that tip pretty strong. Um, you can also thin that tip out a bit and have it, have it be a little bit weak. But in general, uh, they're a very strong blade, uh, very aggressive choppers, super fun to own, super fun to use. Um, and I would encourage people to go check out, you know, Jason Knight's Kukri's on his page. Next up, we have one of my favorite designs, uh, one of my favorite custom knives to make, and that's the dagger. Now there's a lot of kind of different shapes you can get in daggers. Generally speaking, a dagger is a symmetrical knife. Uh, the edges can both be straight down to a point. Uh, you can have a lot of curve going on. I've made S style looking daggers. Uh, but generally, I like to see daggers be symmetrical. Daggers are double-edged, meaning they have an edge top and bottom. Uh, daggers are also very difficult to build. If you're a custom knife maker, you know the dagger is the big creme de la creme knife that you have to make for the Mastersmith judging competition, or not competition, but the Mastersmith judging requirement to become a master bladesmith. The reason they want you to make a dagger is they're difficult to make. Symmetry is hard to achieve when you're making something by hand. You have four different facets on that blade that you have to sharpen. Uh, a dagger is made really for one thing and that's to stab stuff. Um, you know, there's also what's called the needle point, which that's really just a dagger, but gets really thin quickly and it's long and skinny. Um, again, all of these things are made to stab. Uh, the drawback to a dagger is, is they're just really not useful in just about anything else. So you're not gonna be out doing day jobs and opening boxes with the dagger, uh, but you will definitely see them uh, being car carried more in a self-defense standpoint, and they just look badass. Last, we have the push dagger, uh, kind of the cousin here to the dagger. A push dagger is one of the coolest knives. I think it's one of the neatest ones is from a story standpoint of history and whatnot, and, and it's more of an American style knife. Uh, it was carried in the old card playing days in the old west. Uh, but that's a blade that you actually hold in your hand. That's why they also call it a punch dagger. You grasp that, that handle and the blade comes out between your fingers. It can come out between your middle fingers or your middle finger and your index finger. That's an offset push dagger. Uh, those knives are really made for a self-defense uh, in a bar fight in the card west, old west uh, card playing days. Um, these guys would come into a saloon, they'd have to turn their guns in because you weren't allowed to have your guns in a saloon at a certain point, but they wanted to have a knife to have some self-defense. So when they'd put that in their vest, get in a little bit of an argument, guy calls you a liar, you gotta pull that knife out, and now you're in a bar fight and you're punching people, but you're punching people with not brass knuckles, but a punch or a push dagger. Um, blade shapes vary, they can be symmetrical, can be more of a leaf shaped blade like I've made some of those that are on my website. Um, I just love making them because you can be super artistic. You can get really cool with design. Um, drawbacks to them, they're not real handy for anything else other than punching people with them. And we don't encourage that. Uh, another drawback I would say from a custom knife making perspective is, is if you don't make them a lot, and make them out of wood and mold them several times, they can be very uncomfortable in the hand if you don't get it right. So all of the custom ones that I made, I would just make out of pieces of plywood and I'd make them over and over until it felt good in the hand. And uh, so, yeah, push dagger, one of the coolest knives out there. Uh, 
Go check them out and read a little of their history.